taking a look at bug 17460, staff interface to manage self-registered patrons and other fun stuff about patron self-registration in the age of COVID and library limited hours. So yeah, it would it would definitely be nice to have some sort of interface to manage that. Um, because right now we have to use report. So um, and if we've got an interface for modifications and suggestions and reviews and all that other stuff. I think we have one for reviews. Like comments, yeah. Comments, yeah. That's and where. tags tags have a moderation page too. I guess I don't really have anything else on that other than I would like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, um, and then you were talking about the notice. So they don't get a notice when they register or? The only notification tied to patron self-registration last I checked is the one to verify an email address. So you go through give an email address, submit the form, and it says, great, we've sent you a notification to verify this. And you go to your inbox, and you click it, and you go. But it doesn't have any of the other trappings of the new account um, or account info notice that's sent to patrons um, that are registered by staff that might have all the pertinent stuff they need to know about, like, did we copy down your information correctly? And any other information you need to know about the library. Self-registered patrons don't get that, and they can't get that if they get fully registered later on, if that's the workflow, because that new account email only ever goes out the first time a new patron account is created. Did you so, get go ahead. <laughs> did you that information on the confirmation screen when they've registered, but unless they save it at that point? Um, I don't think they have a way of revisiting and, and getting their username and password. Mm -hmm. Is that something that could be added just to the template of the, the, the only message they get? I mean, the one where they have to confirm their password? Well, that's if the library is requiring it and some libraries don't. Oh. But they still want to send a notification to the new patrons, but they're not going to put them through the register your email address bit for whatever threshold of accessibility they're trying to reach. I see. So yeah, it would be nice if the welcome email could trigger at some point after the self-registration. Um, for us in the self-registration workflow, they have to, they can place some holes that they can't check anything out until their account is upgraded. So it'd be nice if at the point of upgrading them to a full account, that email could go out somehow. And I'm not sure how you could trigger it there. I mean, a button on the patron details page would kind of do it because sometimes patrons just, I forgot, or when did you send that? And just for the sake of supporting them, send a fresh one. Here's yeah, that, your account's details again. That would be nice to have a manual option for sure. It's like a checkout slip, but you know, here's your account details that are pertinent. Just maybe not including the password, but just everything else. That would be handy because we get people who forget what their login was or what email address did I use to sign up or. So I do feel like. I do feel like, can you hear me better now? Yeah. Sometimes with the mask, it's hard to tell. Okay, um, I, f I, I was trying to find the notes, but I feel like I remember a release maybe like, maybe two years ago that added the ability to like set up special notices based on some, or like pa email patrons if certain things happened and we never turned it on. So I don't really remember the details. The patron emailing. Um, so you can you can make your own um, notice and tie it to a report, 
And with the two, you can, you can set up special custom um, notices. Because you could probably set up something like that for, and I missed the first part of this conversation, so this is just what I was gleaning, but if you're looking for like sending information to self-registered patrons when they self-registered, potentially. The, 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 the biggest problem with it, I think, would be the password. Um, yeah. Being encrypted, I don't know if you could figure a way to send that data correctly where mm -hmm. they would see their password in plain text. Yeah. And maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, agreed. Our passwords when you self-register are easy. <laughs> you know, we have the jQuery set up to do the same thing we do by default, where it's like their last name, just as it was written in the last name field. So, so in that case, you could set up um, uh, a custom notice and then just Explain instead of showing their password, you can just explain what it would be. It's a combination of mm -hmm. nine. Which makes the part of me that wants security cringe, but I suppose well, I until know. we can offer two factor authentication on COA or something, well, it's not going to happen. Until last year, until last summer, we didn't even give our option, our patrons the option to change their password if they wanted to. I did finally convince them to do that last year. So um, since like July of 2019, patrons now can set their own password should they hey. want something more secure. So dragging this forward. It's hard because we have a lot of public schools mm -hmm. and they want the password to be easy for their their students to remember instead of like yet another thing. And so that's why it's set up that way. And that's why for a long time they didn't even want the option on because they didn't want their students changing it. Um, but then there's newer school librarians who don't have those same hangups. So. In password management, throw that in the list of things you ought to learn in school along with how to Deal with a checking account, manage credit, life jobs. Learn how to organize your passwords in a digital environment. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah, any of that, any but things. I do. I know the the mitochondria is the powerhouse of of the cell. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm. uh, but I do like that idea for. Um, so you've got a notification set up to go out daily to all the newly self-registered patrons based on the report every day. That'd be cool. Um, but the on-demandness of it, I still feel like that is like the complete package of uh, customer support. Yeah, because and I can send this to you now because you're asking for it and you're in front of me and you want to look at it on your phone. Yeah. We also have a lot of users and staff that they can manage email, they understand email, and they keep things in their email. So if we could hit a button and send them their account details, it would be a place that they know they could find it and keep it. I'll volunteer to write that bug if I don't find one um, very synonymous. Similar to it in Bugzilla, I'll look. So Jason, I'm using the same jQuery you use for uh, 
the test server for when the to show if the jQuery is broken. Um, you know, have a different background made by jQuery or pulled in by jQuery. So then if you break the jQuery, it um, shows something different. But for some reason, when I open up the administration, like the system administration, it takes forever to show the correct. I mean, not for, but like five times as long to show it on that screen than on other screens, which I just thought was interesting. Yeah, no idea. That's something I cobbled together. There's probably more efficient ways to do that. Uh, yeah. You mean the background doesn't load for a long time on that one? Specific? Yeah, on just that one, the regular, so there's like a background that's loaded not by jQuery and that loads right away. But then there's a second here I can show Green. So we've got this test server, this is what it shows. And then if the jQuery is broken, or sometimes when you load a new page, oh, see, and it didn't do it that time. Now it's not doing it now that I, it knows that I was onto it. If you break the it's jQuery. Because everyone's watching. Yeah. It always works when everyone's watching. Where, where are you hosting the image? It might be. Like oh. taking a while to drag from there. Yeah, it's on Git. Actually, it's um. It's, it's George's. Same, it's George's. <laughs> it's the same one George uses because we haven't made one yet, but we wanted to have it up right away because there's already some people doing training on it, and so um, so yes, it's George's until we can make our own. Um, so it's on GitHub, which is where I would probably host it also. Um, and then just if it's broken. So you just put that background jQuery at the very bottom of your system yeah. preference? Yeah. So then if you, in theory, if you break something else in the jQuery that affects everything after it, you'll notice that the jQuery is broken right away. <laughs> Which like is probably not a perfect, I'm sure there's times when you can break the jQuery and it's not a problem. Um, but there are definitely times when I've already had it work for me. So yeah, that was Jason's, uh, I think Jason, you were the first one who did that. The pineapple protocol, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, and then Right. Sure. My jQuery comments aren't going to make any sense if I ever quit. <laughs> People <laughs> aren't going to like that. And then we, this is the, the default background. So if I started sharing again, yep. I didn't think about that. It was probably because it's hosted on, like on GitHub and yeah, but usually GitHub's reliable, so I don't know. I well, don't know maybe if there's it just, a better place to host it. Or maybe it just does it like the first time I load the page on a day or something. It's not uh, caching, maybe. It's not know. caching or something. It was just maybe something I noticed. If it's a small image, you could stick it in Koha server file management. <laughs> it's an ugly URL, but like if Koha's up, that's up. Mm. If you're looking to kind of foolproof it. Well, and we might wait to, to try something like that until we have our own image instead of stealing Georges. I mean, harvesting Georges. You need to make that a plug-in. That way everyone can uh, get to it freely. But I, I do like the idea of pineapple protocol that if it's broke, it alerts you. That's a nice, nice bit. I wonder what Heather's would be. Like you've entered a uh, not satisfactory mark record. <laughs> An image of pearls and little hands clutching them. <laughs> you really need to go back and look at your required fields. Go now. That's right. Or, you know, a little animated GIF of someone going. <laughs>
So I guess I can share something that I discovered earlier while I was playing with um, patron clubs because we're finally getting ready to roll that out. Um, so let me share my screen. And hopefully this is the right screen and I don't have anything suspicious open. Just a few things. Let me close those. Okay. <laughs> All right, so you can see my test server here. Yeah. Um, like so the skull and bones. <laughs> while I was testing, um, I noticed that this uh, table here is not sorting alphabetically. Um, and it's just a table, uh, which, and like we're going to be adding lots of authors. Um, so I wanted it to be more manageable. So, um, I was going to put in a ticket to recommend that it become a data table, but as I was poking around, I figured out that I could just transform it into a data table with some jQuery. Um, so that's what it looked like, looks like before and after the jQuery, it looks like this. So it's much nicer and it filters down. Um, nice. Another bug I want to put in for clubs is bad like we need some sort of batch enrollment tool because right now it's like a, a one-off thing. I'm sure you could probably do that, like insert it into the database on the back end. But um, right now, if I want to put 20 people on this in this club, I have to go to each person's account and click enroll on each person twice, um, which is going to be cumbersome. <laughs> um, so I want to say that something to do with the sorting or alphabetizing of patrons clubs came up earlier this year and I saw it and I can't remember what part. It might have just been this. Uh, I want to say we have a, do we have a bug for it that, Lucas? I, I, I don't know about the bug, but I think that I've um, had tickets um, with the same alphabetical problem. Um, I didn't turn it into a data table, which I think is actually a better solution. I just organized it alphabetically with jQuery. Um, would love to see your your jQuery. If sure. So it's that right there. I can put it in the chat. Um, but also, all it's doing is adding a class to that table because it doesn't have anything to grab onto right now, um, based on the heading right before it, and then just initializing seeing that as a data table and that worked. I was kind of surprised. Um, I did have to put it in an Ajax complete because that does load into yeah, the page after. Um, so let me stop sharing so I can find the chat again. That's much simpler too than the jQuery for trying to organize um, <laughs> alphabetically. Yeah, and since it's a data table, it's automatically sorting that first column. So yep. I didn't have to put anything else in. Then you get some extra features too, like being able to sort it as you uh, how you want. And the filtering yep. is nice because people will be able to search for who they want to enroll to. When when you um, make it a data table, does it also automatically give you the options for uh, exporting? Um, it does not. The The only things it puts up there are the, it, it limits it to 10 entries and then it lets you expand that and then it puts a search bar up there but um, and paginates it, but it doesn't add any of the other stuff. Thank you. I'll, I, I know I'll be using your jQuery now in the future. <laughs> We've got some club bug, some bugs about clubs that involve notification um, or hold notification. Um, still looking around to see if there's a bulk add or bulk notify sort of thing.
that again sounds like something that maybe could be done with the patron emailer. So things like a club enrollment notification. And two clubs from patrons. That's not very descript. A lot of things on the staff user interface between um, staff who can see that a patron's in a club versus staff who can actually do anything about it, um, which seems to be in need of a little bit of love. Because presumably that patron might come up and ask for things associated with that club, but, but if the staff member doesn't have the right tools permissions, they're not going to be able to make the changes they're asking for, which is yeah, and the permissions on that seem messy. I know there's one like you have to have the modify holds priority permission right now to place yeah, club holds, bad. which is not something I want to allow people to do. Um, so we're still kind of working out our workflow on who's going to be placing these large batches of holds. So um, I may be able to rein that in. Uh, but yeah, it would definitely be nice to not have to give people that permission. Otherwise, I'm going to have to like give them the permission, but then actually take away their ability to move those holds around, um, which is not clean either. Maybe 2021 will be the year of Koha clubs. It definitely will be for us. I mean, like, we this was a development we paid for, and it's taken a while to get in. Um, but we've been excited for it all along the way because um, it's going to save so much staff time. Because uh, right now, people have notebooks full of papers. And on those papers, it says which authors each person wants when a new book comes in. So having that all stored in Koha and then having, like they had to place one hold for every patron. So having just a one button solution for that is gonna save so much staff time. I have people, some of my CERC staff members are afraid of how much staff time they're gonna save. They think they're losing <laughs> like precious control over things. So I'm gonna have to do some damage control there. But, we can go and find some more work to do. Yeah, for sure. But there's always something more you can do, get working on or make even more clubs. So if they aren't doing it <laughs> based on patron quantity, now it's just going to be so many more clubs that they have to manage and we'll fill that jar right back up. Yeah. <laughs> also excited about the fact that we can set it so that patrons can enroll themselves to the clubs, um, which we've got a few libraries that. <sighs> They don't like to bring in books from other libraries. They like to just give their patrons their books. Um, and I think they've, they've kind of pulled the wool over their patrons' eyes because our whole thing is sharing. Like if, if the book's available, the patron should get it as fast as they can get it. Um, so if the patron is, being, is able to kind of bypass that staff member that's locking them out of consortium wide holds, um, it should improve their service as well. So really excited about patron clubs and club holds. I'm working on yet another uh jQuery for the curbside plugin today. Although apparently my OPAC user JS has a problem. So first I have to figure that out. Uh -huh. 
Um, but we want to hide the alert staff of your arrival button. So just doing more messing around with the jQuery there because we're having them either come up to the doorbell or call us when they get here. If you, I, I don't know exactly what that looks like, but if you can hide it with CSS, do it that way because um, a lot of the curbside plugin uses JavaScript. So when you try to run jQuery from mm -hmm. the over the top of that, so I tried, oh, hmm. maybe I wasn't trying it in the, maybe I was putting it in the wrong CSS field. I bet that's what happened. Not always possible to do it with CSS. Um, hmm. If you can, you don't have to worry about when the DOM loads. Yeah. And I thought I'd tried doing that, but now I'm not seeing it in there. So I'm wondering if maybe I, first I'm, I've got to check on my regular server because it wasn't on my test server. And I might've been messing about with that while we were still getting it set up. So hmm, yeah, I, I think I put it in the internet instead of the OPAC when I was trying that. I do that all the time. Too many CSS locations. Yeah. Or not enough. <laughs> or not enough. <laughs> but there's, all right, there's internet, OPAC, self-checkout, and I know there's one more. Uh, there's some uh there's like there's additional uh style sheet stuff where you can you can bring in a style sheet from somewhere else there's a spine label one i think Aha! Yeah, I must have just put it in the wrong field when I tried it before, because that totally worked. Yay. So now I can go put that in our regular, not test server. <laughs> And now I have, you know, two servers that I could end up putting it, you know, when I'm trying to figure out where it is. Did I put it in the, I mean, it should all be in the test server now, but if there's stuff I was messing around with before we got the test server, I still might find some of that in the regular server. The fourth one is self check in user CSS. Internet, OPAC, SEO for self checkout, and self check in, which is so many CSS pages.
I think we've uh, covered every possible topic that we brought to this meeting, which is every, just every fine. topic in the known universe. Um, Lizette was going to ask about template toolkit, maybe. Oh, yeah. And then I did not spend as much time working on that yesterday as I had planned. But because um, I'm working, I'm putting together a template toolkit reference sheet for Koha US. And uh, thanks, Lucas. Je Jesse shared your notes with me, okay. or some notes she got from you with me and then I was planning on looking them over and seeing because I knew that when I opened it up I was like there's stuff that Lucas has told me that I've written down that's not on here so I was going to try to like put it all together and fill in some blanks yesterday or figure out what blanks I had to talk to you about it today if there was anything that I was like I feel like we've talked about this but I don't have it written down anywhere but then I didn't end up having time to put it all together yesterday so was the thing that got shared with you um, a, a, a Google Sheet with a bunch of color coding in no. it? No. Okay. I have another document uh, I will share with you. Um, awesome. I will Black, ask for an email for you that it, it's a, oh. a Google Doc, so um, mm -hmm. it's got a different template toolkit things in there. That sounds good. Thank you. I really need to start writing stuff down. Like there are three things that I know I should have should ask about here and I can't remember any of them. <sighs> Maybe next month. We did have a good um, jQuery webinar type thing earlier this week that George gave. Um, so we posted that up on, on the YouTube channel and I'm going to get that up on the website later today if I remember. So. Um, for anybody watching the recording who just wants more jQuery knowledge, that's a good good thing to watch. Um, he did show you how to hide everything entirely, things not to do. So <laughs> that was fun. Um, but yeah. It's a follow up to his very, very basic jQuery he did earlier this year, which is also up on the YouTube page. And I think there's going to be a third one early next year. What's yes. you say? Just, just base, basic, basic jQuery. jQuery. Yeah. Then we'll have to start getting into advanced jQuery. Mm -hmm. An intermediate jQuery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From it, uh, basic jQuery to very, very, very intermediate jQuery. Right. Very intermediate jQuery. And then you have the whole advanced beginner, uh -huh. beginner intermediate, very, mm -hmm. very. <laughs> Just go with the level systems. It's jQuery level one, jQuery level two, jQuery level three. And we'll just keep going up. Yeah. Then you don't have very, to very if you attended one. the basic, the advanced basics jQuery webinar or the basic advanced jQuery webinar. <laughs> Here's a random question since we're sitting in silence. Are there any uh, third party cash register hardwares that integrate with Koha? I'm going to guess no. Like 
you buy right, a cash but... register and then it talks to Koha whenever you take money and stuff. I know that the cash registers modules and stuff are coming in 2005 and that's what sparked the question at my users group. Not that I know. Can't think of any name brands either. I don't know of any That's in particular. You might want to look also at the bugs about the cash register, especially the very first one, because I feel like someone was talking about a specific brand and it was someone in Europe though. So it's probably not something that's available here, um, but you might want to see who it was go look at the comments on the early bugs and see if there's more information there too or the early comments on the bug about adding cash register systems or else there's another bug entirely about it let me see yeah I, it's not something i necessarily want to like crush the threshold of <laughs> um but i i said i would ask and i never got around to asking anywhere so I'm asking here. <laughs> um, I know that Koha doesn't process like credit cards and stuff directly, um, but there are, are there's plugins for some of those things, right? Is that right? Yeah. So far, there is PayPal is the main one, uh, FIS, Nelnet, and PayGov that I've heard of libraries integrating with. Um, but PayPal has definitely received the most love, um, development and attention. Okay. I, again, something I probably don't want to cross the, the threshold with, but um, knowing that it's possible is mm -hmm. good. I believe somebody recently asked about Stripe. And yeah, see, I, I mean, platform processor and uh, just asking about it. I don't think there's any momentum on that yet. I don't even know what most of my libraries use. Like most of them aren't using any sort of payment thing. And I know there's like a Kansas government thing that the my local library uses. I, I just don't know. It's too like far reaching and random. <laughs> well, and I saw yesterday someone asked about like a coin machine that could hook up and uh, where you could put coins or they called it a coin machine, but I looked at the brand and they do coins, cash and cards, depending on which machine you get. So um, where you could like have it hooked up to a computer potentially. But again, I think you'd need, I put bug 15654 in the chat, which is the one I was thinking of where someone was trying to get um, but it's in discussion, and the last comment on it was after um, adding cash registers, the account system got pushed like a year ago. Because um, now that it can, now that there's that cash register system and there's like an API tied into that, um, that might make it easier to make the two talk to each other. Or at least, or really it's saying, I guess there's not as much API, but resurrect this bug as exposure of the feature via APIs. So either there is an API or use this to kind of shape what the API needs. So. Okay. Thanks for the info. Again, probably not really web dev related, so sorry about that. But <laughs> There's a web interface for it. That's at true. Some point in the transaction, so. Uh -huh. It does seem like most of our SIGs are pretty overarching, except maybe cataloging, but even in cataloging, we talked about reports the other, other month ago, so. Absolutely. Well, Cataloging touches everything. <laughs> even even at book club, we talked about um, the geolocation of libraries within Koha, which still I think we can't update ours now that I'm thinking about that again. Yeah, I remember that Slack and I'm like, okay, I need to look into this, but 
there's water's gone over the bridge since then, but it yeah. to get even more metrics out of geolocation. And well, this week like, we were talking about template toolkit and we're the acquisitions group is anxiously awaiting your template toolkit uh, FAQ, Lizette. Yes, and uh, now that I have uh, that spreadsheet from Lucas, he shared it with me. Thank you, Lucas. Um, that'll be helpful because that's definitely got some of the stuff that I was like, I feel like we've talked about this, but I didn't write it down and it wasn't in the stuff that Jesse sent me. Uh, and so, Let me know if you have any questions about that, Lisa, because those are really kind of intended to be just notes for me. So some of it might be a bit confusing. Yeah, well, and what I'll probably do is, you know, um, like my my previous one that I did started out as notes for me, and then I just went and like explained what the notes meant more, <laughs> basically, to to other people and put them in a format that hopefully makes sense. So yes, I'll ask you if any of it, if I have questions about it, and and try to make it make sense to people. It makes sense to me, or what I've looked at so far. Um, The cheats are just, you know, the shorthand of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. You usually need to translate it back into English. Yep. There's some things to be careful about in there, like particularly with overdues. If you use template toolkit to loop through overdues, um, that works. But when you're talking about ODU 1, ODU 2, and ODU 3 with different triggers, um, it doesn't, it always gets all the overdues. So um, something needs to be written in there to tell it how many days a thing should be overdue before it, it is included, if that makes sense. Yep. Okay. That does make sense. Another balance, probably easier. You write notes like I write notes. <laughs> When's the next, that was acquisitions or cataloging that was talking about that? Acquisitions this week, and that is the third Tuesday of the month. Uh, in the morning is when that special interest group meets. Because maybe, let's see, so that's the... 19th in January. I do believe we'd be looking at the 19th. At what time? Um, it is nine o'clock Pacific time. I might try and come to that. And at least if I don't have it done, then maybe I'll be like, what kinds of template toolkit questions do you have? So we can try and make sure they're covered on here. Maybe. I'm probably overselling it a little bit, but it was, uh, it came up in talking about the new notify a new manager of a um, suggestion, purchase suggestion. Um, so with 2005, you have the option to change managers and notify a new manager um, on the uh, one at a time level. If you bulk update managers, we tested and it does not uh, create a series of notifications to the new manager yet. Or a and digest. Notice, yeah, not a digest. So. Right now there's just a uh, uh, suggestion management. Uh, I forget the name of the notice, but it's it's pretty obvious in there. Uh, notify new su purchase suggestion manager. And it uses template toolkit to grab who you're talking to and I think the suggestion title or something like that. So. Yeah, and I don't think that they had any specific questions. Hmm on like just modifying to... that notice. Yeah, we, we were just talking about it and what it looks like. And, um, but I think that the acquisitions have several notices, right? So it mm -hmm. probably would be good information for them um, to know that, yeah, that they can I do different things. I looked at that recently it. and it's notification when a suggestion's made, when it's managed, when it's accepted, when it's rejected. Ideally, when it's on hold, there's a bunch more in there than I thought there was. And if you have custom statuses, you can make a, a notice for each custom status, too. Or for whichever custom set. Like, we talked about doing one for we have a custom status for when it goes to our interlibrary loan person. 
-hmm. so we have like a we talked about setting one up so that when it went to that they'd get an email that was like please respond if you want an ILL or not yep that came up too is um libraries trying to uh, reduce the bureaucracy around uh, purchase suggestions versus interlibrary loan requests and assuming that the average patron is going to know the full implications of one or the other is a little bit optimistic um, unless you're a library staff member and then once it's submitted there's been cases of it ping-ponging back between departments not realizing that the other department had already referred the patron to do an ILL instead of a purchase suggestion and vice versa. So I could see a, a more robust notifications explaining the process or options to patrons. Mm -hmm. In that would be nice. Maybe yeah. save some time and workflows. And ours at least they go through so our all our purchase suggestions go through our collection librarians at Moscow and then they if they don't want it and it or if they can't purchase it or don't think it's a good fit for the collection or whatever um and it fits within our ill parameters which is we only do books we don't do movies or dvds so if it's like a print thing then it gets sent to our interlibrary loan person and we just have it as like a status and then he can go in and look at all the ills that way and then he usually ends up having to contact them unless either it's someone who does it a lot and knows to put it in the notes section that ILL is okay or a staff member helped them fill it out because we ask and we have a note on the staff side that's like please ask them if they'd like an interlibrary loan if it's not purchased so at least we don't have the bouncing back that did used to be when I first started here that happened sometimes when it was all on paper um, but not as much lately or not, not at all lately. carbon copy paper slips no we they're just not they're not vintage out. for us <laughs> I know. still ordering carbon copy paper from the newspaper <laughs> uh, i'm really interested in to see what um that those people come up with in the acquisitions group because it, it did sound pretty intriguing to mm. to start it at a to, yeah, just to make it more streamlined for the patron and make it more understandable. Um, of course, that wouldn't, it doesn't work for our current workflow either because the purchase suggestions come in, then they decide if it's going to be um, purchased or if it's an ILL, and then they fill out the little carbon copy paper if it's an ILL and send it to our ILL person who then does something with the pink and yellow copies. I think they may just throw them away um, and they request the items. So, yeah, it, it's interesting. It, basically, what they were talking about was like patron initiated ILL external to Goha using the purchase suggestions as the starting point, um, which is, I think, a great, great idea. So, Well, it's been 55 minutes on my clock, covered a lot of topics, and hopefully have some interesting things to follow up on for anyone uh, checking out this Zoom in the future. And I think that could be a wrap.